Welcome back to CNN Philippines. More people troop to voter registration sites on the eve of the deadline. Let's now check the situation on the ground. Chrissy Dimatulak joins us live. Chrissy, how's the crowd at this hour? Yes, Ruth, as you can see behind me, only a few people are waiting in line to register and vote for next year's elections. The line was long earlier in the day uh, as people tried to beat the deadline tomorrow. And because of health protocols, some were not accommodated. And this is what they have to say. It is not Nora's first attempt to line up for the voter registration in one of Comelec's satellite registration offices, which are now in malls for the comfort of those eager to be registered. However, Nora was unable to secure a slot for registration. Yung nasa page po ng Comelec is 8 o'clock, yung start ng pila. So ngayon, di po ba ma'am, kasi pang four time, times na po namin bumalik dito eh. Nung nakaranan, sabi po ng polis na nakausap ko dito na ka-duty, sabi niya ma'am, punta na lang kayo ng madaling araw para kumuha ng number. City Aina, on the other hand, questioned the election officer on why their slot was forfeited. According to Aina, she and her friends were given slot numbers. But due to the lengthy waiting time, they left the queue to do personal errands. When they came back, they were no longer accommodated. Sabi nila, hanggang 8 lang yung 8 a.m. na ba't nandito na para pumila. Pero for, yung iba hanggang 7 p.m. nakapila na po. Tapos kami 4 a.m. na kami pumunta. Naglakad pa kami mula kaya po hanggang dito po. Tapos wala din kami na datnan. Hindi po kami makakapunta bukas kasi exam po namin sa madrasa. Kaya parang wala kami time para... Isingit pa to. This is the last chance para lang maging makapag-register. Tapos ganito pa po yung nangyari. According to the Comelec officer in the area, these kinds of situations are unfortunately inevitable given the strict health protocols. Only 400 registrants are allowed to enter a Comelec satellite registration office per day. Senior citizens and people with comorbidities are being prioritized. Sa ngayong araw po, nag po kami ng 400 slots po sa mga applicants natin. Wala po kaming appointment ngayon. Kinansel po lahat namin appointment para po maibigyan daan po lahat. Yung 400 po na slots po. Yun sa 400 slots po, hindi po kaya kasama po dyan yung mga priority lanes po natin. Pati po yung mga PWD, senior citizen, buntis, hindi po kasama sa mga nabigyan ng number po yun. As they come po yung mga senior natin, diridiretso po yun. The officer added, they have received more than 5,000 applications since the registration began. They are expecting more people will attempt to make last-minute registrations on Saturday, which is the last day. Ruth Comelec spokesperson James Jimenez says field offices have yet to submit uh, their assessment on voter registration turnout. For those who still want to register can check the Facebook pages of local Comelec offices to see which establishments can still accommodate applications on the last day. Back to you, Ruth. Chrissy Dematulak there reporting. President Duterte has signed into a law a measure postponing the first regular elections of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM. The regional polls will be moved from 2022 to 2025. In 2018, President Duterte signed the Bangsamoro Organic Law, which abolished the Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or ARMM. Sangayon po sa batas neto, binibigyan ng kapangyarihan ng ating presidente na mag-appoint ng hanggang 80 or 80 new interim members of the BTA who shall serve until June 30, 2025 or until their successors shall have been elected and qualified. The creation of the BARM raised hopes the Bangsamoro will have a chance at genuine self-governance that it has been fighting for for decades. 2022 hopefuls weigh in on drug tests for candidates. Senatorial aspirant Rafi Tulfo earlier made the proposal to Comelec. The tandem of Senators Ping Lakson and Tito Soto have no problem with this, offering to be the first to get tested. Lakson adds tests should be conducted randomly. Vice President Lenny Robredo also agrees with the proposal, saying she is ready to be tested anytime. For Manila Mayor Isco Moreno and Senator Bato de la Rosa, the drug test is a must. De La Rosa's running mate, Senator Bongo, adds this will show voters if aspirants are fit for public service. Labor leader Liodi de Guzman agrees the drug problem should be tackled, but through different means. Pero yung approach ay hindi yung dapat katulad nung ginawa ni Pangulong Duterte. 
dapat yan ay i-approach at kilalanin bilang health problem at hindi bilang parang mga kriminal na pinagpapapatay. Robredo also reveals how she will combat illegal drugs as well as her other plans if she wins the presidency next year. Will her approach be as bloody as the Duterte administrations? Our senior correspondent, Anjo Alimario, has the story. The war on drugs was a centerpiece of the Duterte administration, a bloody war that left thousands dead. The International Criminal Court is now looking into these killings in an attempt to make government officials accountable for alleged crimes against humanity. Will presidential aspirant Vice President Lenny Robredo continue the campaign? Ganun katindi, ganun katindi pero sa ibang paraan. Citing her short stint as co-chair of the Interagency Committee on Anti-Illegal Drugs, Roberta says she doesn't believe in heavy enforcement. She'd rather have the Dangerous Drugs Board chair leading the agency. Ang paniniwala ko, pag DDB yung umupo na chair, ang plano niya hindi lang patay-patay-patay. Ang plano niya talagang very comprehensive, heavy on prevention, heavy on rehabilitation. Roberto says she will also continue the administration's Build, Build, Build program and would push for projects that will directly impact those who need them the most. Yung sa akin, dapat yung infrastructure natin magsuspur siya ng rural development kasi masyadong concentrated sa Metro Manila yung development. Kailangan ilabas siya pero hindi siya mailalabas kung hindi natin hinanda yung mga different provinces across the country. On high electricity rates, Roberto says all stakeholders should meet and talk from power generators to distributors while taking environmental concerns into consideration. Bicol is often visited by typhoons and Roberto wants to invest in disaster proofing rather than being reactive. Marami kasing disaster proofing na hindi magagawa on a per municipality basis. Uh, meron, maraming disaster proofing na magagawa lang kung ang mag-uusap yung lahat na affected. If she makes it, Roberto is ready to give a big role to whoever will win as vice president and prevent the experience that she had gone through. After all, she says, she's ready to be a healing leader. In Sorsogon, Anjo Alimario, CNN Philippines. While Robredo is in Sorsogon as part of her visit to her bailiwick, the Bicol region, other presidential aspirants also made their rounds in different provinces today. Senator Manny Pacquiao went to Toledo City in Cebu, where he gave gasoline assistance to 300 tricycle drivers. His visit drew a huge crowd where physical distancing was seemingly not observed. Pacquiao has been criticized for previous gatherings in other areas where health protocols were also allegedly breached. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno, meanwhile, met supporters in Quezon City. Moreno vowed to continue the Build, Build, Build program, but to focus on projects involving housing, hospitals, and schools. He adds it's time someone not from elite clans take the reins. Lakson also went to Pampanga to talk to local leaders and residents. Still ahead on Newsnight. Social media giant Facebook is going meta, literally. The group changes its company name amid controversies. And singer Ed Sheeran finally drops his new album. He shares the inspiration behind Equals when we return.